Well, you're going to love this one. i got to tell you, if you don't like foul language and you don't like my bad attitude, you may not want to watch this video. Um, this video is about how to get screwed by the Ecuadorian bureaucracy. I'll get started on just a minute. Hey! Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. So many of you probably uh, saw the video that I did last week about the the runaround that I got by the Immigration Service, the office here just around the corner from me where I live here, when I went in to get my visa, just to apply for my permanent visa. And I got the biggest runaround by this employee who was assisting us. He wasn't really, I don't know what to say. Was he assisting me? No, no, I'm sorry. No, he wasn't assisting me. He was screwing me over. And it's amazing some of the comments I got back from people, even local people, who talked about how this must have been a disgruntled employee. I got, I'll just read a couple of these and, and then I'm going to get to the real meat of this video because you're going to, you're going to love this part. You need to hang on here and stick with me because I'm going to tell you how I got fucked by the Ecuadorian bureaucracy. Actually, it's, uh, it hasn't com been completed yet. I'm in the process of being fucked by the Ecuadorian bureaucracy. And you'll hear about it. I'll tell you in just a minute. Let me read a couple of comments from people talking about this jerk-off at the immigration office. I'm fuming listening to all you had to do, and still that wasn't good enough for that government employee. I call that plain ignorance. It seems it makes them feel good to have that power over you. So annoying. I also, I love it when my screensaver kicks on just as I'm reading. I also use this, uh, almost name, well, I'll go ahead and say, I also use Gringo Visa and I paid for the power of attorney. And luckily I didn't have to put up with anything. They did tell me though to bring my passport with me, which I did. And when we got, and when we went to get my visa in Cedula, my case is a little different. My wife is Ecuadorian, so I got a, got an, Amparo visa, which is permanent. But anyway, talking about the government employee, another comment was, hi, Don, it was probably a disgruntled employee and one that does not like foreigners getting sedulas, especially Americans. He knows he can, can't turn your application down, but feels pleasure in making the paperwork as difficult as possible for you. That's how it is, unfortunately. Hi, Don, it was probably a disgruntled employee and one that does not like foreigners getting sedulas. Well, I think I just read that one, didn't I? That guy sounds like he doesn't like gringos and was just being a pain in the ass. You know, speaking of that, I I get my ass chewed out by Stella once in a while when I tell her that sometimes it just feels like the Ecuadorian people just don't want us here. I'm not talking about just us Americans, but I'm talking about all you know uh, retirees that come here and retire here. That's the way it feels to me. Sometimes, not always. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I, I love a lot of the Ecuadorian people, but I'm telling you, it's getting harder and harder and harder for me to feel the love. It's getting harder. I have to mute my phone so it doesn't disturb. It's just very important to talk. But after you hear about the rest of this story here, you're going to see why I feel the way I do. Because I'm telling you, folks, right now, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm getting where I'm fucking hating this place. I, I can't believe how hard it is just to go day to day and live a normal life here. You can't a couple weeks ago, I got a ticket. Many of you know I drive a car here. I got one of these photo radar tickets. It was about three weeks ago. I hired a lawyer, paid him 50 bucks. He's, I'm confident he's going to get it dismissed. That's pretty much what he does for a living. He gets a lot of these things dismissed. It, it, the fact that I got it, I mean, I, I kind of knew when I got it. And everything, when he showed me the picture, yep, yeah, that's my car. And even though I couldn't see me in it, but I knew, I knew the exact place. And I know, I remember coming into this, off of this bridge, down this hill, and there's this photo radar zone. And... Some of these, they put up a big sign and warn you that there is one ahead. 
but I don't recall seeing one on this particular street. And I came off this new bridge and down this hill and boom, there I was right in this photo radar zone. And I thought to myself, mm, I bet you I just got a ticket. Sure enough, I did. $133. I haven't paid that. I paid $50 to the lawyer and we're going to fight it. And he feels confident that I will get rid of it. That's all fine and dandy. Day before yesterday, I got an email about 7 o'clock at night from, let me see what it's called here. Um, I got it from the, the Duran ATD Transit Authority. In the email, they're informing me that I have committed a traffic violation for exceeding existing speed limits on public roads. And on the date, they're saying 6-29-2023, at 3.09 going 31, that's in the morning, that's 3 o'clock in the morning, at Avenida Nicholas Lapinti and Cali 60 OE, with the vehicle with license plate, my license plate, which you own. Okay, and guess what? That ticket that I got is in Duran, Ecuador, which is a suburb of Guayaquil. They're saying that I was in Waikil at 3 o'clock in the morning, exceeding the speed limit. 3 o'clock in the morning, my car, my license plate. And here, I'm going to show you, here's the picture of the, that they sent me in the email. And as you can see, it's very dark. You know, I guess 3 o'clock in the morning it would be. And I zoomed in here, and sure enough, there's my license plate. Okay, of course, another thing is that you may not know, this particular car has two headlights on the front. My car at night has four lights on the front. So I'm inclined to believe that this is a clone license plate, or hell, it could be a duplicate. The way they do things here in this country, hell, there may be three or four license plates with the same number on it as mine. But guess who it's registered to? It's registered to me. And this is a $400 ticket they're claiming. They claim that I was going over 103 kilometers per hour, which is 64 miles an hour. It's outlandish to me that they claim that I was in this location at 3 o'clock in the morning, which I wasn't. I was here in my apartment in bed asleep like a little baby. I even went to the security people here and asked for anything that they had that shows me coming and going out of the building. They have 24 hour video surveillance here and sure enough they gave me videos that shows me coming and going. I'm not going to bore you with all the details but the only way after talking to my lawyer the only way we're going to be able to beat this is I had to basically prove to them that, that I was at home during this time. And the only way I'm going to be able to prove that is to show them video, surveillance videos, and they can sit and watch the video and see that I never left this building from certain time to certain time. Okay, and that's the way we're going to beat the damn ticket. If, I, if, we don't, if we don't bid, I had to pay the fine. So, to add insult to injury, when I talked to my lawyer about this yesterday, he said, well, I checked your record at the Ecuadorian Registry, Transportation Registry, and guess what? There's another fucking ticket. On the same day, only this one's in Waikil. They, they sent me another ticket and saying that I'm in Waikil speeding in my car. And of course, I don't have a picture. I haven't received that email notification yet, but I looked it up. And here it is right here. Here's the information that I looked it up online. You can see here, you know, what, what it says. There's the three tickets. The one, number three, the one on the bottom, that's the one from Monta. That's the one that... I get to get a little. I get to do a little five-minute Zoom meeting with the judge uh, later in July, 
and so he can well uh, basically dismiss this. Uh, but the other two, one and two, there, those are the ones in Duran and Wyakill. And their time, the time is three o'clock, three o nine in the morning, and eleven o seven a.m. Eleven o seven. That was yesterday. They were saying that I was in Wyakill speeding in my car, when in fact. I was with Stella, and we were in Santa Marinita, okay, showing an apartment. I've talked to a lot of people about this, and I'm getting, you know, lots and lots of information and feedback from locals, and people are telling me this stuff happens all the time here. It's the bureaucratic bullshit, the inept, incompetent bullshit bureaucracy in this country that apparently nobody can seem to control. Nobody is out of control. If it's, it's what's ironic and what's really pisses me off is that they don't have to prove to me anything. I have to prove to them that I wasn't in Waikil and Duran. I can't imagine why I would be in Waikil at 3 o'clock in the morning in my car, ever. I could never think of, I wouldn't go there at 3 o'clock in the morning to pick up the winnings from a multi-billion dollar lottery. I would say, uh, I'll have my driver come up there later and get it. I'm pissed about this, folks. I'm telling you, maybe, I'm probably going to win this. I'm probably going to get out of this. But who's to say that I won't get some more of these? Where are they coming from? Where, you know, somebody's making these up. Somebody at this office, somebody somewhere generated this report and put it on my record, and I got, you know, three hundred and sixty dollars worth of tickets here that they claim I'll have to pay. You know, if I if I don't win, but that's that's what's happening. And that's, and that's how I feel about it. And I'm telling you, if you come here and you buy a car, you've been warned, okay? I have no telling what kind of bullshit you're going to have to go through like I am. I got a feeling that this is just the tip of the iceberg. I can't imagine what's going to happen next. I'm afraid to check my email. Now I know how to log into the website and look at the records myself and see and the thing is I gotta pay this lawyer to do all this work fifty dollars a pop here this is a, three of them here now hundred and fifty dollars I gotta pay this guy he may even charge me more fortunately the, my the, the here where I live they have a 24 hour video surveillance and they can see when everybody comes and goes and they record 24-7, non-stop. And Stella talked to the administrator of the building and talked to her into coming in today on her day off and to get their technician to come in and they're going to put the non-stop video surveillance from the 28th to actually this morning. And there will be a video record of my comings and goings and hopefully... It'll be enough to be able to convince these jerk-offs here that I wasn't in Waikil four hours away, speeding in my car. was so grateful for my administrator. I, I bought her lunch today and, and thanked her for doing what she didn't have to do. And I'm going to have a flash drive, and I'm going to give it to the lawyer Monday morning. We have until Tuesday to respond to these tickets or they will automatically find me the maximum amount which one of them is $450 the one in Duran where I was supposedly going 103 kilometers per hour I don't think my car will go 103 kilometers an hour so anyway that's that's you know that's the dark side of living in Ecuador I guess and you know, you know how I am. I tell the truth. I just tell it like it is. I am fucking pissed at this country. I am fucking pissed at Ecuador right now, and I don't want to be here. I want to go home. I, I'm, I'm just over the last several weeks, I've 
things like this keep happening to me and it makes me just not want to be here anymore. Now I understand why so many Ecuadorians are leaving. Don't get the wrong idea, folks. I mean, if there's some of you that come here and just put up with it, you're not going to drive a car, these won't be an issue for you. That's fine. Come on down. There'll be a really nice apartment available here in December, unless things really change, or change my mind. Depending on how I get through this, I'm not even talking about the, the incident that we had in Santa Maria Nita with a with an asshole expat calling me an old man and flipping me off just because I looked at him. That's a whole, that's a whole nother video. There's a guy in Santa Marinita, complete asshole. He's an expat, an American expat. He likes to play real loud music. He plays Phil Collins, uh, Led Zeppelin, plays all kinds of classic rocks. He plays it real loud. And one of the Ecuadorian neighbors went to him and told him that he woke up his baby and the guy said, so? Not my problem. He's, he's a real, he's a terrorist in my opinion. He's a bully. He starts trouble with people. He won't follow the rules. But anyway, that's a whole other video. I don't even know the guy's name, but he, I just happened to look up at him and he said something to me and I just say, waved him on. And then he, he hollered at me again, turned around and he's that to me and the people I had with me. So anyway, that's it. The good and the bad. I'm telling you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, like I always say, with peace and love, bite me. Okay? I'll see you on the next one. By the way, folks, the video coming out Monday is an interview with another expat. It's a pretty interesting guy. And I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. One time my parents switched my food and I ate the fuck out of that organic bullshit and it gave me a tummy ache. That night I had uncontrollable projectile shit and it even got all over my brother Pluto. My parents panicked and switched me back to my normal food but the damage was already done. I shit myself all over the carpet for three nights in a row. On the last night I was trying to sleep under the bed when my asshole started squirting out diarrhea at 3 a.m. I then got stuck and couldn't get out from under the bed so I panicked and sharted everywhere. My parents had to move their heavy ass bed to clean it and the room smelled like rotten asshole. The next night my brother and I had to sleep outside because my parents were sleep deprived because of my poop shoot spewing out shit. My parents had to get the carpets professionally cleaned after and have PTSD. Every time I fart.